y'all, it's time for us. <laughs> Other than being us, it's me and Deborah Setzer Hi. from Deborah Setzer Studios. <laughs> I'm Vonda with Crafting with Scripture. Paula's gone. Run that girl right off. I got Deborah today. <laughs> so Good now, to Deborah is a wonderful artist, and she is going to. You know, I can't paint. She says I can, but we all. Everybody can paint. <laughs> there you Everybody go. Can paint. She's going to give us the basics of what we need to be looking for, what we need to do. And y'all, it doesn't cost an arm and a leg like I thought. I thought you had to fork out a bunch of money for paints and brushes and all of that stuff. She's making me feel better, okay? <laughs> One of these days, I might just come online and do more than a stick figure. You just don't ever know because this lady is going to fix me. Yeah, so let's just take the uh, stress out of painting um, at the Dollar Tree or at Walmart. Mm -hmm. We can find the brushes that we need and really all you need is these three brushes and you could probably get by with two, but I like to have these three. The first one is a flat brush. The second one is an angle brush. Let's stick it up there so there that can Okay, yeah, that's flat. a flat brush. Mm -hmm. This is an angle brush. Mm -hmm. You can see how that angles. And this is, I'm going to put it right in front it's of bad. yours. It's, there we there go. There you go. Um, that's a rim brush. And it, it's kind of an old brush, but it's one of my favorites. So. All right, so I've got this uh, angle brush at Walmart. And this flat brush I got at Dollar Tree. So you don't have to spend a lot of money. And they come in sets. So if uh, actually there's a set right here. So yeah. I got this mm -hmm. at Hobby Lobby. No, I didn't. Mm -hmm. I lied to you. I got yeah. this at Walmart. Yeah. Because and I didn't know. I thought I had to get good brushes. No. And I've just been using these with my apple barrel paint thinking that I'm just... Yeah, and, some cheap stuff. And what's great about having inexpensive brushes, you're not afraid to use them or abuse them, which I abuse my brushes. And when I abuse my brushes, I, I find that my paintings turn out better. So just don't even worry about the expense because it doesn't cost a lot of money for your brushes. And she told me also that the same thing goes with canvases. Absolutely does. Um, yeah. You know, who's not gone to the Dollar Tree? And I'm sorry, we're reflections giving us crazy things going here. But the Crafter Square, one dollar, y'all. Mm -hmm. So, and then paint. And they come in different sizes. That's right. Yeah, 11 by 14, 10 by 11, uh, 4 by 4, 5 by 5. Uh, six by seven. I mean all sorts of a selection there. And you just name it. Yeah, they're great 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 paint great canvases to just practice on. Now um, that was another thing. I thought you had to get one of those strung that's pulled over on mm -hmm. the wood frame and no. all of that and hey no. I'm learning all day what to do here. So Hey Janet, hi Deborah. We're glad you joined us. This hi. is Deborah. If you didn't get her, <laughs> hi Deborah. First. <laughs> hi Deborah. Okay, I, I think I know. That's my her. sister. Oh, I guess I don't know her. <laughs> well, it's nice to meet you, Deborah. <laughs> okay, so also we need to talk about paint, right quick. Yes, absolutely. Now I have artist paint. Now you could go to Hobby Lobby and spend. You know, it, their prices are pretty good for artist paint but there's really no need to spend a lot of money on paint. You can use crafting paint. Uh, this, this is a uh, folk art craft paint. This is, what is it? I can't read that. That's some kind Outdoors, of outdoor something stuff, or other. 50 cents folk a art. bottle. Yeah, this is the kind of paint you want to get uh, to start out with. And again, just have fun with it because it doesn't cost a lot of money and there's no stress, right? Uh, what you want to start out with though is your primaries of yellow, blue, and red. There's it. And then a white and a black. Now if you want to, so you don't have to mix anything, uh, you want to maybe get an orange, a purple, and a green. Those are your secondary colors. All right. So if you want to mix your own colors, that's fine. You can do everything with your primaries of red, blue, and yellow. And you don't need a lot of black. I don't often use a lot of black, but you're going to use a lot of white. So I recommend you get a couple of these. All right. Uh, the other thing to note that 
I oftentimes use my artist paint in combination with craft paint. And I might take a green, more acrylic artist paint and add the other green to it and it extends my, my uh, paints. It's just a way to be a little more frugal and it really doesn't affect the outcome. And see, I thought it was all gonna be different because I thought, yeah. well, this is gonna shine because it's a better, better paint. Different and this finish. Is gonna have a shine. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you don't have to worry about that because when you're done with your painting, you're gonna seal it. Or you're gonna sometimes people use varnish but you're just gonna seal it and when you do that it evens out the sheen and it's gonna look all nice and beautiful who knew yeah so you who knew? no need to worry about different kinds of paint so feel free to just use whatever you have and just I guess I let the secret out of the bag I've oftentimes used leftover house paint uh-uh mm -hmm. Acrylic, of course. Oh, yeah. look at there. Left over out of All paint. this time. So to Who knew? Use whatever you have. Okay. All right. So now she's going to show us a little bit about how to use that angle, angle brush, brush for us. Yeah, we're going to so, start with an angle brush. Hang on. I'm going to pull us down here so we see it. Y'all are just going to have to miss our happy faces. <laughs> and let me. Um, oh, I can't see it for that. Split the screen. Let me split the screen. Oh, I don't technical even... difficulties. Yeah, you know, I'm full of technical di there, there we, we go. go. All right. Okay, so let's make sure. So we're on our heads, but not to y'all. How is that? All right. So oftentimes what happens is, you know, as, as newbies to painting, we think that if we find a really nice painting like Thomas Kincaid, we think, oh, we can never do that. Oh, okay. I love him, and I think he's way over my head. I love Thomas Kincaid, and he is actually, you know, was a very talented, talented artist, gifted, and God just really gifted that man. Well, you can break down more complicated pieces into a more simplified version. Now, there's techniques that we can do and, and, and make it really simple. So when you're looking at a painting that just inspires you, we're not gonna copy his painting. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take elements of it and make our own painting. Which is exactly right? what we say mm -hmm. in crafting, is you mm -hmm. take something, you don't copy it, you make it your own. Absolutely. Now when you're looking at a painting, when you're thinking about where do you start, well, you start looking at what's farthest away, what, what is in the background, and in this case, it's all this muted area here, right? It's just muted color, that's all it is. There's no mystery to that. So we're gonna take the mystery out of it. So let's do the first background. Which is amazing because I would have done that the, the opposite. I would have, mm -hmm. I would have painted the, the house first, I think. <laughs> It's the most fun. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> but, and I get to use my ruler and. <laughs> but really, I like the I like working with the the muted colors because you can get all sorts of nice little effects. So what I'm going to do is what we saw in that Thomas Kincaid. It kind of had a purple base to it. So I'm taking some some uh, purple and some white, all right? And I'm going to mute it down. And notice how much paint I have there. I want a lot of paint. Right. You don't want to be stingy on the paint. Now, something to keep in mind, if I, what we saw with Thomas Kincaid was a muted purple. See, that's not the same purple, now is it? it, it in fact, it does, this doesn't really look purple, but trust me, there's purple in it, and I'm going to show you how to do that. On the color wheel, if you pull up on your own uh, just a standard color wheel, and you find purple on there, and you look directly across from purple, you're going to find yellow. Now, when you use yellow in purple, what it does is it neutralizes it. I like to just call it, fa it fades it out or it just kind of mutes it. Okay, so I'm going to take that muted purple, put it right there, and I'm going to add more white to it. Because the whole object, right, is to get muted. Right? Right. All yeah. right. So the first thing that we do, and I'm just going to pull back this tape just for now. Okay. That's just painter's tape. The first thing that we do is I'm going to use this angle brush, and I'm, I'm loading it quite a lot with a lot of paint, and I'm going to just tap it straight on, just straight on 
just like that. And I'm just tapping, and I'm just trying to get that color in there. Just tap, 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 right? If you could show them real quick that Thomas Kincaid, where the white part is, or the more kind of a beige area right here, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pick up some more white, and I'm going to tap that in, okay? Because what's happening right now is that purplish muted color I had on my brush is mixing with that, that white. It's blending more than anything, yeah. isn't it? Just blending it blends out. blends it in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm just going to tap more of that purple in. This is a little brighter, so I can bring some more of the yellow mixture in there. And let's just tap it all out. So you're now, not really worrying about how much you got on your brush. You're just getting it out there, right? Yeah, let's just get, in fact, let's just really relax and get that paint off of my brush and then tap it. How about that? Oh, yeah. Okay. And that brings in a whole different color. Doesn't yeah, it, it did. Mm -hmm. Now, again, we're not trying to copy that painting. We're trying, we're just right now, we're just trying to show you the different techniques and texture you can get with just tapping. See that, I mean, it's not real complicated, is it? No, not at all. Mm -hmm. Let's See, I would have just white. been going from left to right and mm -hmm. just swapping. So. Yeah, and now maybe I might want to add a little green, okay, just for interest, because foliage can be green, right? Right. It can be all different colors. So we have that green in there, and I'm going to take some of that purple mixture that I just was using, and I'm going to add that in there. Now I come out with a whole different muted color, don't I? Now that's a, a, a point that I, I really want to make right now. That when you are mixing colors, new colors, you don't just start from scratch. You use your mixture that you used in other parts of your painting. Does that make sense? That makes a lot of sense. So you've got purple, white, and mm -hmm. some green. Mm -hmm. We've used yellow. We've used yellows. Mm -hmm. And you can't, when you first look at it, you don't see that. No, you, you sure just don't. You just kind of see a mixture of different colors, but you mm -hmm. don't, it's not something that jumps out at you, mm -hmm. I guess. It's not like a solid blue, see? Exactly. I, yeah. So that mute, that muted look, and I've got some blue in it right now, and that's okay because I'm just going to tap that in too, all right? And maybe I don't have this as white as I want, so let's add a little bit more white to it. That's okay, all right? The whole idea is to create variation because that'll, when we put trees in front of this, it's going to push this back. This first layer is going to push it back. And you would extend this all the way over. I'm not going to do that right now, but you would extend that all the way over. So basically, we've got the very, very back of this mm -hmm. painting done, mm -hmm. or on this corner anyway. Mm -hmm. And so now, as we move forward, forward, are we going to be more precise with our lines, or are we going to tap some more? We're going to tap some more, because we don't want to get into a lot of detail till we get into the foreground, and meaning right here. You can notice that this tree here has, it's darker for one, and you can really see the edges. Versus this, it's really muted and faded, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Even yeah. this fence is pretty faded in comparison to this area of the Exactly, fence. Yeah, yeah, I see that. So we, we wanna keep it, we wanna keep it real simple. So let's move on to the tree trunks, okay? Can you bring that picture back and show them the tree that we're about ready to do? Uh, back, backwards, yeah, there we right go. Here. Right here. This is the tree we're going to do. Now notice, we're going to look at shapes. This tree is kind of like a triangle, isn't it? But it's not just a solid triangle. There's variations in it. It's feathered out, isn't it? You get that feathered look by tapping. All right, Simple. that's cool. All right, so let's lay in our tree trunk first, and I'm going to use my round brush for that. Now, I notice you keep daubing that in water mm -hmm. you, you, with your brush. Yeah. Do you use a lot of water? You don't just put your brush in there without water yeah, in it, Yeah, right? before I start, I actually dip my, 
my paintbrush into the water first and I, I just take out the little excess. What that does is it moistens it at the base and so it prevents the paint from clogging up in there and drying and running my brush. Oh my gosh y'all yeah. that's where my paint goes right there. Because what it there. will do is it make the bristles go like that. Exactly and yeah. it's hard to wash them out because they get Later. all gummy. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. So just wet it first and then grab your paint. So I'm going to grab some brown. Now that is one thing that I didn't mention. You could you can actually mix brown, but that's in a whole nother video. So I would recommend you just get a basic brown. And because this tree is in the background, I'm going to mute it as well, right? So I'm going to add white to it. That's all there is to that. Simple white. Now I like to take my round brushes and roll it into the paint and it gives me a little tip. Okay. Now I'm going to find the place that I want my first tree to be, and we can put it about right here is good for you. Yeah, that looks All great. Right. I love the colors that you've got there. Oh, and cool, now yeah. that you've shown me, I can see so many colors that I would not have noticed before. So there's your basic tree trunk. We're gonna, let's put another tree right here, just for fun. And I have a little bit of paint still kind of left on my brush. So let's put some tree trunks in the background that will make more sense later. Okay, so we're just going to... And they're not that. like precise lines no, like and, I want to do. Yeah, and I always have a tendency to just want to do straight up and down for trees, but trees don't really grow that way. They can grow sideways, right? They go all different mm -hmm. ways. And the branches are the same way. You don't have to put your branches in, but if you absolutely want some, just, just kind of just very lightly put some in. Again, they don't all just go up. Some of them might go down, right? That's right, yeah. So I can go down with them. But what's going to happen is we're, we're going to cover that with uh, leaves and such, right? Okay, yeah, because we don't just see the le the, brand, the trunks. Mm -hmm. no, we see we what's between yeah. us and the trunks. Right. And I had kind of a glob of paint right there, and I'm just kind of smearing it. It's fun. So we don't have to throw it away and start over again, no. huh? And that's the other thing, to just be relaxed. There's no pressure here. If there's something on here that I don't like, all I have to do is just paint over it. There you go. You know, it's really no big deal. All right, so I'm going to switch back to my angle brush. And I'm just wiping the paint off. I'm not washing the brush in between. Because again, I want the colors to kind of mix anyway. So let's grab some yellow because it was a yellow tree, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm going to grab some yellow. And again, we're muted. So I'm going to put some white in there. And what's the opposite on the color wheel to yellow that we learned? Purple. Purple. So ah, I, I want right. to mute my yellow. So I'm just going to take a little bit of purple and I'm going to put it in that yellow for me. Now it's going to be predominantly yellow where over here it was predominantly on the purple side, right? Right. All right. And then I'm going to mix in my white to that. And it's not as dark as I'd like it to be. So let's add just a little bit more purple. Let yourself play with it. So if you're online watching us, because I messed it up a while ago, I cannot see that if you're commenting, please be sure and comment because when this is over, we will read the comments. Yes. Um, and sure let, uh, if you have any questions, she's the lady to ask. You don't want to wait until it's my turn. There's no stupid questions. We recommend all questions. Okay. Now I'm going to take a little bit of the tree trunk brown that I had, and I'm going to add that in there as well. See how that darkens it? All right, so let's do some tapping. I'm just going to tap. Now, I'm not going to tap over the entire thing like I did, but what I am going to do is I'm gonna, I can take the tip of the angle brush or straight on, however that feels more comfortable to you. I think I'm going to use the tip. And we're just kind of thinking about when you're painting this, think about what a normal tree would look like. Well, it's chaotic, isn't it? There's nothing symmetrical about nature, is there? So I'm just going to kind of just lay it out there. You cross over the tree trunk, right? Right. Cross over. I might have some stray little leaves out here that's not really connected, but far away. You don't see every little twig and every little branch, do you? What she's telling me is I'm going to have to just quit drawing straight lines in a circle on right. top. We want <laughs> randomness is what, what there you we're go. going for. All right. 
So I'm going to take some more of the yellow. And I picked up some yellow okra by accident. Um, yellow okra, by the way, is a really good color to have in your arsenal. Um, and you can get that in craft paint as well. So I'm going to take that and put that right on top. And, and see how I get like a variation now? From the first layer of leaves I had. Does that make sense to you? It does. And it reminds me of our scripture for today, oh, which great. is Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And God didn't just say, Woo, I'm going to make the sky blue. Let's mm. do that. Because look outside, y'all. Look right. how many colors there are. Look at the grass. Look how many colors that they are. Which is exactly what we're doing right now. Mm -hmm. We're adding tons of different colors to the basic primary mm -hmm. colors. And now I'm just adding a little of the, the, the uh, orange. And I could have added some red to it to make the orange. But since I had the orange eye, I just grabbed the orange. Now I, I'm just going to put, just a, again, to add variation. Because not all trees are exactly the same color, are they? It's not flat. So we want a variation in color. And maybe I just want to pick up some of the straight on yellow. Just gives a little more interest mm -hmm. to the colors. And you know, if you're like me, you have to remember less is more. Okay, <laughs> so no one to stop. So we're gonna stop right there on that one. I'm gonna pick up my round brush now and I'm gonna pick up some of that brown paint. And I'm gonna lay in just periodically kind of up the tree trunk just so kind of define things just a little bit. Maybe I might even want to add a little branch there and maybe there. I don't have to do really more than that. I mean, that's plenty. Again, it's just to give the impression that that tree is there because when you put things in front of it, same like with what we did the first step, it's going to push that tree back and you're not really going to, it's not going to be the focal point. Mm -hmm. It's just going to add to the overall appearance. So, I think that's my main problem is mm -hmm. I think everything should be like the focal point. Yeah. You know, everything should be clean and crisp, and, right. but it's not that way in real life. No, it sure isn't. It sure isn't. Now, let's, you want to do another tree? Yes, let's do that. Okay. Now, the other tree in this in this composition, we're, Ooh, thinking, we're thinking it's a cherry blossom tree. I mean, I, we could be wrong, but we're going to just call it a cherry blossom tree. And it's a very classic tree of Thomas Kincaid, ones that are in most of his landscapes. And they're beautiful trees. It's a little different than the first tree that we did. The, the petals are a little farther apart and a little more sparse. So we're going to take, uh, let's, let's use magenta now. Now, you can use red, just straight red, and add a little yellow to it. I'm going to use my magenta because, again, I had it on my palette. And I'm going to take some white to that. Now, on the color wheel, directly across from the color wheel, is green. And so we're going to use the green to neutralize the red. Now, so picking pretty. up a color wheel, or at least Googling it, would mm -hmm. be a good idea to yeah, tell you, you what to do. You can print it on your printer, or, or just see it on your screen. You know, and if you get too much green in there, just add more red. Now it's pretty dark, right? Well, I kind of want it to be at first. I'm going to add a little white to that. And it doesn't look like the actual picture because what we're going to do is we're going to lay in the darker color first and we're then we're going to make it a little lighter. Oh, okay. Right? And it'll give it a little bit more. I guess dimension. I'll look at everything backwards because <laughs> I would kind of do the, the opposite. Well, that's interesting. Uh, you might really like watercoloring then because watercoloring, you paint the opposite. You paint the light oh. first and the dark last. All right, so I'm going to use my round brush this time and I am just tapping the tip of my brush. See, brushes don't have to be used the same way. You know, it's not just back and forth, up and down. You can you can jab it, you can stab it, you can mm. glide it. So just let yourself move your brush around till you find 
the feel that you like, the look that you like, and the overall appearance that you like. So again, you can kind of see how I'm, it doesn't look like a tree yet, does it? No. But we're not done. All right. So now we're going to take some of the, just the basic red. This is like an apple red. And I'm going to add some white to that. And I'm going to take some of the mixture, right? Mm -hmm. Add that because that's what we do, right? We overlap our colors. So we get that kind of harmonious look to it. Now I'm going to tap kind of over it. And I'll, I'm going to overlap in some areas. I'm going to add a little bit more red to that and maybe a little bit more white to it. It's kind of humid today, so my, my paints are drying really fast. So if you find that that's true for you, I just picked up a uh, spray bottle from the Dollar Tree, and I just missed my Look there, what would we do palette. without the Dollar Tree? I know, they're great. All right, so let's just tap over that. That gives me a little bit more pinkish, doesn't it? That's a pretty color, too. Yeah, I like that. And so on these cherry blossoms, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter. Let's add some more white to the paint that I already had on my brush. I'm going to go lighter. Even so, actually, we're going to go even lighter than that. Now this tree is a little smaller because I want it, in the end, I want it to look like it's a little farther back. And I'm going to tap in like some branches in just a minute. My uh, cherry blossom trees get a little bit plump, but that's okay. It's usually a bit more sparse. Now let's say you say to yourself, well, I don't like the shape of that tree. Well, that's okay. Dip your uh, brush into some water and go back over your background color that you had originally. I had probably too much red on that. And just tap it in and it breaks up the pattern. So we're gonna just, okay, let's say that I'm going, I'm, I'm gonna do this painting and it's gonna be a whole lot more, but now um, one of my kids called and, and they got car trouble, <laughs> and which is the story of my life. Mm -hmm. I've got to stop and put everything, mm -hmm. I gotta stop. Mm -hmm. So do I wanna just throw all of this in the trash and then no. start over again? How do mm -hmm. I get those same colors back? Or yeah. what do I do? Yeah, in the beginning, I, I would keep my palettes just the way they are. And so what I would do is this paper that I have it on is actually palette paper, but you can use wax paper. And just measure it out the size of a rectangle, like a Tupperware, that you can get at uh, Dollar Tree. Mm -hmm. um, and just, when you're done, you set it right in there, you missed it real good, pop the lid on, and it'll be good to go the next time you paint. Oh, okay, so I see that that's gonna keep me from, I mean, because I don't know how I'd mix those exact colors again. Well, and you don't even have to really worry about uh, mixing them exactly, because you don't want them exact. Well, that's right? true, that's yeah. true. Uh, you want the variation, but you you know the basics. You know you make you know yellow and red makes orange and. And that, I saved you know. a lot of time mm -hmm. by holding on to that too, because yeah. it took a while for you to get this all yeah together. Yeah. So save save your palette paper. Just pop it in your your Tupperware, and uh, you'll be good to go for the next session. Wow. So we've got two trees, and we've got mm -hmm. the background, but we're not going to let her run off. <laughs> We're going to, hold on, we're going to turn ourselves upside down again. Y'all just bear with me because we got to talk. There we, go. there we go. There you go. There, and our, our light's going to kind of okay. do some crazy stuff. <laughs> but we're used to that. Yeah. We're a little darker in here than we used to. Okay, so if you like her, if you love her, be sure and show some hearts. Thumbs up. Let her know how she's doing. If you really have gotten a lot out of that, please let her know. Give her yes. give her some praise. We Any always questions are welcome. That's right. We and I'm sorry we're glitching. Um, we do read comments, so if you have any questions, anything you will ask about, be sure and put it in there because she's going to be able to answer the questions for you. Now Deb is in the process of setting up her own Facebook page, so. Write this down, Deborah. 
D E B O R A H Setzer. Yes, S E T S E R. S E T S E R. Mm -hmm. Studio. One studio. Okay? <laughs> it's going to be on Facebook. She's going to come back and play with me again. Yeah, I can't wait. And I want. I want to try this. I want. I want. I, I want to see yes. you finish this. Absolutely. We'll because continue Because I this. watch really well. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get a paintbrush in our hand eventually. That's well. Yeah. We'll try anyway. <laughs> so this closes out pretty much today, and so we just thank you so much for joining us. You know, even with crafting and like painting, it's all a mind thing. Just yeah. let your mind go wild and decide what you want to do. But we love you so much, and we're so thankful for you and thankful for the time that we get to spend together. So until we see each other again, be sure and remember and love one another. Right. Bye. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I can't turn it off. Oh, this is the blooper part you cut out. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we will be cutting that off. Oh. <sighs>